Okay, comrades. Um, I mean, the reason for for the whole of today's work in Economia is is because we public republished or published in Economia's Generated Revolution. In Economia, that's a book that we published originally in Economia in 1982. So that's nearly 30 years ago in Economia now. Um, and the purpose of that book was to analyse in a kind of the, the, the Russian question, if you like, in a kind of, and then the question of the development after the Second World War of a series of um, states that were identical in fundamental in their fundamental characters in a kind of to the Russian state under Stalin, in a kind of, the states of Eastern Europe, the states in, in, in China, Southeast Asia, Cuba, etc. Um, and the reason that we undertook this work you know, was because. In our view, the, you know, kind of these, the, the Russian question you know, was a key to understanding what happened in a kind of, to Trotskyism after the Second World War. Why Trotskyism in a, in a, in a, went into a terrible crisis, why it split into kind of two and then into many in a kind of fragments, all calling themselves or a, attempting to reconstruct or rebuild the Fourth International. Um, and we were doing two things. You know, we, we did this because... You know, to be frank, we came from uh, the, the original you know, kind of nucleus of workers' power in a kind of, with, the, with the left faction of the International Socialists, which was the predecessor of the Socialist Workers' Party. Now, as comrades will know, the Socialist Workers' Party has the an analysis that Russia in, is a form of state capitalism and that all these other states were also in a kind of forms of, of state capitalism. Um, so, for us, in a kind of in that, we came to the conclusion in a kind of... In a, during the onset of, with, with the onset of the new Cold War, um, that we had to reanalyze this question because it seemed to us, in a kind of correct, to take a position of defensism, of defending, in a kind of the, the, the these uh, degenerated, as we call them, degenerated worker states, in a kind of against imperialism, in a kind of against the new Cold War, in a kind of against the you know attacks by imperialism on on uh, you know on, on, on the Soviet Union over Afghanistan. We wished to take a defensive position, you know, because we thought this this was correct tactically and so on. I mean, we, we also had doubts, you know, kind of strong doubts, you know, kind of that the theory of state capitalism ma made any real sense. And in more <laughs> particular, we had strong belief that the theory of state capitalism was not unrelated to the question of why the Socialist Workers' Party had do dropped the transitional program, you know, the method that was embodied in the transitional program and so on. So for that reason, we decided to do do this work, just as we did also produce another book you know, on, that, on the uh, history of the Fourth International. Um, and by the way, we intend to republish that you know, kind of in a much expanded version in a kind of sometime next year or, or maybe the year after. Um, so that, that's why we decided to produce in a kind of this book. It's been out of print for a very long while in a kind of an hour, and of course what has happened since then is that most of these states in a kind of have collapsed or capitalism has been restored in a kind of uh, in them. You know? um, we think in a kind of that, that does not disprove in a kind of in any way Trotsky's in a kind of analysis in a kind of these states. In a kind of, we believe it confirms it. Um, even though in a kind of the comp in, in the transitional program, Trotsky in a kind of offered two prognoses in a kind of on that one, either in a kind of the, the Stalinist bureaucracy in a kind of would you know, become ever more, as he put it, ever more an agency of imperialism within the worker state, and would eventually, in a kind of under certain you know, concrete circumstances, overthrow in a kind of the planned property relations. Right, now I'm going to use that word a bit, so we'll, we'll, we'll stop and, and, and define in a kind of those. Planned property relations means in a kind of the, the means of production, in a kind of much of the, the, uh, uh, the means of distribution and so on, and even in a kind of large parts of agriculture as well, in a kind of and that are taken into the hands of the state. They are nationalized in a kind of that. This is a part of the communist program, by the way, and, it, 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 and, and one, one needs to recognize it its importance today. Secondly, that once you actually have in a kind of a totally nationalized economy, you know, kind of that, there is only one thing that can really you know, replace the operation of the law of value, the operation of, of, of all the various you know, firms and, and, and um, units of the economy exchanging in a, in a, uh, with one another on the basis of profitability. You know? The only thing that can, can replace that is planning. Yeah. Now, 
So the plan, in a kind of a centralized, in a kind of plan of production, in a kind of and that is, is essential, in a kind of to do that. Sec the third thing, in a kind of, is that the that such a, a, a state with such an e economic foundation must, of course, it exist in the world and in the mid in a world market. You know, kind of, and if it were simply, you know, kind of to exist with, as it were, you know, kind of open borders, you know, kind of, or without any kind of protection, you know, kind of against the world market, you know, kind of, then capitalism, you know, kind of, would, you know, rapidly, you know, kind of, uh, break up its economy, you know, kind of, and, um, you know, restore, you know, restore the operation of the law of value inside, you know, kind of, its borders. So you need third aspect, you know, kind of, the monopoly of foreign trade, you know, kind of, which protects, you know, kind of, the planned economy. Those were the, the, those were the programmatic demands, and they remain, to be honest, for anyone who calls themselves a Leninist or a Trotskyist, you know, kind of, and that, the programmatic demands which, you know, kind of, start the process of building socialism. However, of course, as Trotskyists and as, Le and, 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 and as Leninists as well, in you know, kind of, that, we believe, you know, kind of, that it's impossible to build, to c successfully complete, you know, kind of, the building of socialism in one country, you know, and that, because, you know, kind of, you're cut off, you know, kind of, from the world market, you know, kind of, the resources that are available, you know, kind of, are relatively, you know, kind of, limited, you know, kind of, and sooner or later, you know, kind of, and that, the, the pressure, you know, kind of, of the rest of the world, you know, kind of, and that, upon, you know, kind of, uh, you know, a working class state that would carry out, out, out those measures would produce distortions, you know, kind of, and, you know, kind of, forces within it that would eventually, you know, kind of, uh, you know, seek to overthrow it. And, of course, in the end, that is ultimately what happened, you know, kind of, with regard to the Soviet Union. Another key point that we ha have to consider in, in considering the Russian question you know, is the, the question of, you know, the, um, you know the, the, before we go on to, to talk about the mechanics of its bureaucratization, you know, kind of is the question of it occurring, you know, that the Russian Revolution took place in a backward country. You know, kind of like um, just as the revolution, most of the other revolutions that took place, you know, possibly the exception of East, of East Germany and, and Czechoslovakia, most of the other you know, kind of, uh, revolutions you know, kind of, that resulted in these kind of states also took place in relatively backward countries. You know, kind of Russia was a country where 80% of the population you know, kind of, uh, before the Russian Revolution was still working in agriculture. You know, kind of basically, you know, kind of, it was a, an overwhelmingly peasant country. You know. Um, the working class was very small. In a, in a, in a, the the, the work, you know, the, uh, overall, a few millions. For, you know, depends how you assess it. But anything between three or four million to about ten million, you know, kind of in its, at its most generous <coughs> definition. Um, and that meant, you know, kind of the, the, the working class meant two things. In a, in a, in a, um, sorry, the, the, the last point is that as a backward country, it had not only you know, kind of a backward social structure, i.e., the masses of peasants. You know, kind of an, and so on, which were an ancient, you know, were living on, a, on the basis of an ancient mode of production, an old mode of production. You know? But it also had you know, a very weak and small bourgeoisie. You know, and that, I think that's in you know, a capitalist class. And that's important also to remember, because it meant you know, kind of, that Russia had not experienced what the Western countries you know, kind of, had experienced, which is a bourgeois revolution. You know, kind of either led by the bourgeoisie or taken advantage of by the bourgeoisie, because actually very few of the bourgeois revolutions were actually directly led by the bourgeoisie, but they actually you know, kind of, you know, were able to quickly take advantage you know, kind of, of those revolutions. So we've got a situation, therefore, that the Russian Revolution you know, kind of occurred in a backward country with a very small working class, you know, kind of, and um, with... Um, um, you know, uh, a large peasantry, um, and, and, and so on, and, and a bourgeoisie that was absolutely determined not to, um, you know, to, to make a revolution. I mean, one of the interesting quotes from one of the cadet, you know, kind of uh, leaders, you know, the, the Liberal Party you know, leaders, you know, kind of in 1970, in his memoirs, you know, kind of after 1917, you know, said the following: Officially, we praised the revolution, wrapped ourselves with red bunting, and marched under red flags. We all said, "We." And our revolution. But inside, in our private discussions, we were horrified. We shuddered. We felt ourselves to be the prisoner of inimical elements. Um, so when the, the, the revolution of February 1917 broke out, in a kind of, which was a revolution against the Tsar, against the war that had been going on for three years and causing amazing destruction, a revolution that the peasants 
you know, kind of a, you know, who are now in the army. Something like five million peasants have been drafted you know, into the army. And this was a war, you know, kind of that um, you know was you know that that, that produced, in, in a sense, the revolution. Just as the an, an earlier war, the Russo-Japanese War in, in 1904, had actually produced the Russian Revolution of 1905, which failed, but which showed already that the Russian working class was very strong and that the Russian capitalist class you know, kind of was weak and counter-revolutionary, or, or desiring to you know to end the revolution as quickly as possible. Um, and you know, these these issues are very important in terms of the of the whole discussion of the Russian question, um, and including going on to discuss the question of its degeneration, for the following reasons: Marxists, Marx himself, in a kind of a, had assumed that the revolution would occur in a relatively or in the most advanced capitalist countries. In, a kind of, in his own lifetime, he'd assumed in a kind of a look to France. And, and Britain and Germany, you know, kind of as the countries where the revolution was most likely to occur, because capitalism was most developed there, and because the working class, you know, kind of was the largest proportion, you know, kind of the population, and also because if socialism, if the process of trying to build socialism, you know, kind of was to occur, it had, you know, kind of it, it had to be built upon the things that capitalism had, had actually developed, you know, kind of that industry. In a kind of commerce, centralized, you know, banking, banks, and so on. All of these things were very in, in, important, and socialism wasn't seen as a, a kind of recipe that could be carried out in a kind of in any circumstances or at any time in history. In a kind of that, it could only be carried out in a certain in a kind of time in history in a certain kind of conditions. Um, now there was a problem in a kind of with this, therefore, about the Russian Revolution, is that it broke out in a kind of in probably the most backward country in Europe. Um, so it, it seemed to, to take place against in a kind of the, uh, the the predictions of Marx. Gramsci, in a kind of famously remarked that it was the revolution against capital. He meant against that capital. By the way, he was wrong in a kind of a that, but I think. But nevertheless, you can see what he what he meant, that it appeared to go against the whole thing. Now, therefore, the attitude to the Russian Revolution in a, in a, in a, in a, in a, and what happened in the Russian Revolution, you know, the Russian Revolution, of course, was made by the working class and was able to be made because the working class in 1905 and then again in 1917 created these incredibly important bodies called workers' councils or Soviets. In a, in a, in a, these were, you know, mass organizations with elected delegates that were also instantly recallable. They were extremely flexible in you know, a kind of bodies, but of course they were because they were mass organizations. I mean to start off with the, the, the Petrograd <coughs> Soviet had you know had I think by the end of March three thousand members in a kind of a, it was it was unwieldy and it had to be sort of cut down in a kind of a, the worker delegates were, were you know, were, were much smaller in number. There were two thousand. There was only eight hundred worker delegates and two thousand two hundred soldier delegates, and that's because every unit of soldiers wanted to send a delegate, you know, kind of to the Soviet. But the Soviets were, therefore, extremely, you know, kind of democratic and flexible, you know, kind of bodies for working class, you know, kind of power and uh, for working class action. You know, the problem, of course, you know, kind of with the with, with the with the situation at that point was that the parties. You know, kind of that were represented in the Soviets. You know, were you know most of them, the majority of them. You know, kind of the Socialist Revolutionary Party, which was a party of the peasantry. You know, kind of that, and some urban workers. You know, kind of, and you know, kind of the Mensheviks, the minority you know party. You know, kind of of the of the split. You know, kind of in the um in 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 the Russian Social Democratic Labour Party, the Marxist Party that had been founded you know in 1903. So these are the parties. The Bolsheviks, in a kind of a, the majority, were in fact in a minority, in a kind of at the beginning of 1917, a very small minority, in a kind of a, perhaps in a kind of there were about um, 4,000 Bolsheviks, in a kind of a, there are various arguments, 2,000 to 4,000 Bolsheviks, in a kind of in St. Petersburg, much smaller numbers in, in, in the rest of Russia. However, this party was to grow in the course of the year, in a kind of a, that tenfold, in a kind of by the October Revolution, in, in, in November, in a, because of the calendar, in a kind of, an, um, of, of, of 1917, there was a huge you know, kind of increase in the size of the Bolshevik Party, you know, kind of from, from about 40,000 nationally you know, kind of to about 400,000 know, that kind of throughout the whole you know, kind of Russian Empire. Um, so there was this extremely fast development. Now, 
I think we have to talk about a little bit about the perspectives that they they adopted in a kind of an that because. Um, um, the, um, the, 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 the argument you know, kind of that had taken place amongst Marxists you know, kind of, and that related to the, the, the point I made earlier, and that is, you know, was this to be, could, it, could the working class take power? Could there be a socialist revolution you know, kind of in Russia? The, the, all, the, it, it appeared that the more orthodox Marxists you know, kind of answered, no, there couldn't be, there had to be first a bourgeois revolution. Um, and, um, you know, a capitalist revolution that would allow the development of capitalism, you know, kind of the working class would then grow sufficient, you know, kind of to make a socialist revolution at a later stage. Um, the, on the other extreme of the movement, and we mustn't forget, you know, kind of them, the anarchists and some of the, the left populists, you know, were not Marxists, and therefore they thought all this stuff about, you know, kind of the development of industry and, 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 and the working class was nonsense, you know, kind of and that. The only thing that was needed for the revolution, well, first of all, the peasants were just as good, you know, kind of a force, you know, kind of making for revolution, you know, kind of as the working class. You know. Um, they, you know, they wanted to make a socialist revolution immediately, you know, kind of, they, they certainly didn't, they thought it was a terrible idea, you know, kind of, that there should be a bourgeois or a capitalist revolution, you know, kind of that. and therefore the, uh, the only real question was, were, you know, were, you know is, is, is that the working class and the, and, the, and the peasants could spontaneously, especially you know, kind of when, when, when the Soviets had, had been understood and developed, you know, kind of could simply take power and introduce socialism immediately you know, and that without any, any, any sort of problems. Now, Lenin and the Bolsheviks, you know, kind of and that, you know, were, you know, kind of had, had, had a, a different position which incorporated and understood, you know, kind of the problem. You know, that is, they understood that Russia was a backward country. You know, kind of and that. They understood, you know, kind of that socialism had to be built, you know, kind of ultimately, you know, kind of on the basis of a highly developed means of production. Um, but I, mean, I haven't got time to go into the differences between Lenin and Trotsky on the question of the perspective of the Russian Revolution. But you know, kind of by, by and large, the Bolsheviks initially thought the, the bourgeoisie is where they agreed. Where the, where the two of them agreed was that the Russian bourgeoisie was too weak to make a bourgeois revolution. In a, it wouldn't make a, a capitalist revolution. Therefore, Lenin and the Bolsheviks thought that the working class, as shown through the Soviets and so on, in a kind of the, with a working class party at its head, it could actually seize power, overthrow the Tsarist state, in a kind of an open up a period in a kind of, of development which might be long or might be short, in a kind of a, you know, uh, in, you know, in which eventually the socialist revolution would would come. In a kind of a, that. Sometimes Lenin said it, it would be a matter of you know, a very short space of time. In 1905, he actually said, we shall not delay and we will march straight on from the bourgeois revolution to the socialist revolution. But nevertheless, many Bolsheviks thought that it meant in a kind of a long gap between in a kind of the, uh, the, the, the two. Um, and this, so that, that was their view that, you know, kind of, but, the, but Lenin's framework was always in a kind of an act that the, that the problem of the underdevelopment of Russia you know, could only be solved on an international basis. In a kind of that is, you could only carry out in a kind of a, you know, a, a revolution that sort of advanced, carried the, on advancing towards socialism in a kind of on that on that basis. So, you know, as he, he said time and time again, you know, kind of a, the revolution could only be made in a kind of in the in those um, in the in, in the context of a of a you know. Of, of, um, of, of revolution, you know, kind of we ne he said in 1918, we never flattered ourselves with the hope that we could reach the end, he means socialism, without the aid of the international proletariat. Of course, the socialist idea cannot be in a, attained in one country alone. And in, in 1919, in a kind of the um, official commentary of the program of the Bolshevik Party said, the communist movement can be victorious only as a world revolution. If the state of affairs arose in which in one country was ruled by the working class, while in other countries the working class, not from fear but from conviction, remained past submissive to capital, in the end the great robber states would crush the working state of the first country. Um, so... Um, this was the, the, this was the sort of um, the, the, the the perspective on which you know, kind of they made made the revolution. They made the revolution in you know, kind of absolutely on the perspective that there would be an international revolution that would relieve it and would bring you know kind of the working class of Germany in particular, of Central Europe, of Western Europe, 
you know, kind of into the socialist revolution, therefore making it possible for the Russians, you know, kind of to advance towards socialism. Um, right. Um, so, to cut a long story short, you know, <laughs> the, the socialist revolution in the West did not occur. It did not occur because it was impossible that it should have occurred. You know, kind of, there were enormous revolutionary upheavals in Germany and Hungary and and, and, and uh, Austria and various other countries in Central Europe, Bavaria and, and, and so on. You know, you know that. But, you know, um, here the crucial question you know, kind of, uh, arises of the question of the, of, 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 the, of the party because the socialist revolution is not an automatic process. You know, kind of that. You know, it, the socialist revolution is a necessary process. It's a, deter a process determined you know, kind of by capitalism's nature and its crisis. That is, capitalism's breakdowns constantly, I mean constantly, in, a kind of, in, a, uh, in, a, in historical terms, constantly. You know, there may be 20, 30 years in which you know, kind of, there is no socialist revolution, on, you know, kind of, and, and that appears, you know, kind of, and that. But ne or has been, you know, kind of, and that. But nevertheless, you know, it is a necessary event, you know, kind of, and that, that capitalism poses the question by its crises, and we argue, for example, that it's ent entered into such a another period where it poses you know, to the working class either take the power or suffer you know, kind of, you know, terrible barbar bar barbarism and terrible defeats and terrible disintegration, fascism, war, etc. We've seen, seen it happen when the working class failed you know, kind of the last time. You know, kind of that. Um, so that's you know, kind of the, 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 you know, the, 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 the way that the revolution you know, kind of poses itself in you know, kind of that. But if it if it does not expect, you know, if it is not capable of, uh, sorry, if it doesn't find the leadership, you know, kind of which, rep you know, which can represent that, you know, kind of revolution, you know, kind of, uh, then revolutions will fail. You know, in in Russia in 1917, they found, you know, kind of a leadership which succeeded, you know, kind of that in leading the, the work, working class to victory. The Russian working class could have been defeated, you know, kind of that if it hadn't. And they've got a Bolshevik party you know, kind of that had the right program and the, and, 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 and the right kind of leadership. Even with such a party, you know, kind of that, you know, with the wrong leadership, you know, or the wrong strategy, you know, kind of that, Lenin had to arrive in April of 1917 you know, kind of and, that and reorient the Bolshevik party to, towards you know, kind of the seizure of power against the majority you know, kind of, uh, of the party initially. If it didn't have that, then, then, then it could fail. Now, in Germany, it did fail because there wasn't you know, kind of a Bolshevik party you know, kind of capable of, of leading that. It meant that the Russian Revolution became isolated. Um, it meant that the imperialist powers you know, kind of surrounding Russia invaded it. Fourteen you know, kind of, um, imperialist powers sent armies into various parts you know, kind of, of Russia. Yet, the, the worker state was able to survive you know, kind of that. It was able to survive it by building... You know, a huge you know, kind of red army you know, kind of, of 250,000 soldiers you know, kind of, and so on. It was able to do it you know, kind of, and that by the Bolshevik party you know, organizing production. You know, kind of, initially then in the thought because of the backwardness of Russia that there would have to be a long period of what he called state capitalism you know, kind of, by which he meant you know, kind of, that a lot of private owners would continue to own the factories. You know, kind of, but the state and the workers' control in the factories would sort of exercise a kind of veto and a control over them, and the, the, the things weren't ready to move straight, you know, kind of, to a socialist planned economy. Um, but in fact, you know, kind of, that didn't prove to be possible. The di you know, the natural, the dialectic, if you like, of the, of, the, of the class struggle that meant that the bourgeoisie tried to sabotage, you know, kind of, production, and the workers had to take over the factories, you know, kind of, and nationalise it. And they did so not because the Bolsheviks. You know, kind of urged them, you know, kind of to, you know, kind of to do this, you know, kind of and that, but because of the very nature of the class struggle itself, you know, kind of, which, by the way, proves again that the October Revolution was a living, real proletarian revolution, you know, kind of and that, made by the working class, not simply, you know, kind of a, as people say, a coup, uh, as the reactionaries say, a coup d'état, you know, kind of led by um, by Lenin and the Bolsheviks, you know, kind of against the wishes of the working class. But the problem of of, of the measures that it needed to take. You know, kind of in order to, uh, you know, in order to carry out, you know, this um, this revolution, you know, kind of, you know, were really, really serious ones. You know, kind of on that. Um, are you, you know, it was very good that they actually um, 
you know, that they were able to seize power, that they were able to hold on to power, that they were able to defeat these armies, and that they were able to survive an incredibly difficult in a kind of period. In a kind of that. It's been estimated, for example, that the means of production, the, the, co the collapse of the means of production in a kind of in the, as a result of the civil war coming on top of the imperialist war, don't forget Russia had been at war in a, kind of in a very destructive imperialist war from 1914 onwards, the period from 1914 to 1921 when the civil war ended, in a, in a, that was three times as severe as the Great in a kind of Depression. In, 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 in the West, in terms of the destruction, the, something like 62%. You know, production fell to 62% of its 1913 you know, kind of level. You know, kind of agriculture was sort of dev devastated. The peasants stopped sending you know, kind of their, their, their um, corn and, and so on to the markets. The Bolsheviks had to use compulsion you know, kind of in that against the peasants you know, kind of to get the food for the cities. You know. And as Trotsky, you know, says in his, his book *Revolution Betrayed*, which you know, kind of, I would, I think, is is, the, is by far the own, the best and only, you know, kind of clear, you know, kind of analysis from a from a classical Marxist of the whole problems of the revolution and and and, it, and its degeneration. You know? that Trotsky points out there all the things, you know, kind of that that were forced upon the Bolsheviks, which were miles away from their their goal, you know, their programmatic goal. And so on. Lenin, after all, comrades would have probably many comrades would have read State and Revolution. Lenin thought, you know, kind of there could be a, 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 a broad democracy, you know, kind of of the Soviets, in which every, as he put it, every cook shall govern, you know, kind of in which, you know, kind of ordinary people, you know, without any skills, without any special, you know, kind of knowledge, you know, kind of through through the medium of Soviets, you know, kind of would be able to run the state. In fact, you know, kind of in that, the the problem in a kind of was, was enormous. In the one, the working class was quite small. Two, it was reduced in, in, in massively in numbers by the chaos of the civil war. In a kind of so the number of workers in a kind of in, 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 in St. Petersburg fell from about four hundred thousand to sort of only about two hundred thousand, and even less in a kind of and in some of the great factories in a kind of like Putilov, which was the thirty thousand strong ones in a kind of factory, only a few thousand workers, two or three thousand workers were left you know, kind of by 1921. Um, this, this was also because the red, if you had a Red Army of 250,000, although many of, the, of, of, of its um, soldiers were peasants, you know, kind of that, you know, the, the, the cadre of that party, the, the, the officers, the sort of whatever, had to come from the working class. So masses of workers you know, kind of that were taken out of production and into the Russian you know, army. Um, and as Trotsky says in The Revolution Betrayed, in a, in a, that when the war ended and these 250,000, you know, 500,000 perhaps, you know, kind of soldiers were, 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 were sent back you know, into civilian life, most of them, in a, in a, that they became often the administrators in a, kind of, of the state. And so they started to carry out, the, they, they carried on using the measures in a, kind of, that they had used in a, kind of, in a, before that. The Soviets in a, kind of, and that became very weak. You know, kind of the elections to them became very infrequent. Re-election to them became infrequent because the working class was very small. So basically, a, a, a bureaucracy and the isolation of the Russian Revolution meant you know, kind of that it received no economic and, 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 and political aid from outside. So basically, a bureaucracy began to develop in you know, kind of in the worker state. You know, kind of they took you know, they, they were forced to you know utilize you know, kind of the old czarist bureaucracy to, to a large extent, and the process of degeneration started. Unfortunately as well, in a kind of an, the, the, the party of the working class in a kind of became in a kind of a um, a party in a kind of um, in a kind of that that supported in a kind of this bureaucratic uh, procedure. This was partly because the, the actual personnel of the party changed very rapidly in a kind of an, so that most of the party members in a kind of a people you know by, by 1923-24 in a kind of an, that most of them were people who'd not been in the members of the Bolshevik party in 1917 in a kind of an, that. so that you know you've got a different you know kind of same label but different you know kind of content you know in, in, in those terms okay um, that, that accounts for why this bureaucratization took place Trotsky and the left opposition uh, and, and clearly Already, it was a diversion from the programmatic norms in a kind of a, the, the, the Bolsheviks had made the revolution, you know, kind of to carry out Soviet democracy and so on, in a kind of a that. But the only answer, of course, was, you know, firstly, you know, kind of to rebuild the working class, in a kind of as a class, because we don't believe, you know, kind of that simply an institution, in a kind of without any, 
you know, kind of social content, you know, kind of to it, can actually carry something out. It actually has to have work. for Soviets to work, they have to be workers to be and to elect them and kind of be in the factories and so on. So the left opposition, you know, kind of that built that, or, that organized itself, you know, around Trotsky and others against this, you know, was trying to build up, you know, kind of the uh, the working class again, you know, kind of and that. And that's where the whole argument started about industrialization, you know, kind of that we actually needed to industrialize, you know, kind of the um, Russia again, you know, kind of and that in order to, to, to do that. And to start off with, you know, kind of Stalin, you know, kind of and, and, and the other Bolshevik leaders, you know, kind of and that, like Zinoviev and Kamenev, you know, Lenin had died in, 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 in 1924, you know, um, they, you know, delayed and delayed at first, you know, kind of that. Bukharin, you know, kind of the, the one of the most prominent, you know, kind of leaders said, you know, kind of that so we could advance towards socialism at a snail's pace, we should base it on the rich peasants, you know, kind of and that, and we should make concession after concession to the rich peasants, you know, kind of and the result of that was simply, you know, kind of at the end of the twenties, the rich the rich peasants, you know, kind of because there, there was so little industrialization being carried out. I mean the the, the funny thing is, you know, well, comrades may know or not know, but they, one of the great glories of the Stalinist industrialization that was to take place in the 1930s was the Dnieperstroy in a kind of great electric power, uh, hydroelectric station. In, you know, that. And that you know, was the biggest hydroelectric station in the world. It was fantastic you know, kind of thing. But Stalin, you know, when the left opposition first called for it, said to build a, 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 a power station like that was giving in a kind of a peasant a phonograph in a kind of when they still needed a cart in a kind of on a horse. You know. So I mean, the, you know, Stalin was to start off with completely with Bukharin against the idea of any serious industrialization. Um, but the problem in a kind of was that the political regime in a kind of on the basis of of, of, of this you know enormous increase in the in, in the Russian bureaucracy in a kind of and that had expelled the left opposition in a kind of from the party, in a kind of repressed it, you know, expelled Trotsky from, from, from Russia, sent people into the, in, in, into jobs in the you know in faraway places and then eventually into sort of into into labor camps and so on. Um, a political counter revolution in a kind of actually um, in a kind of was, was taking place. Um, there was a big argument, and we can perhaps discuss that within the left opposition in a kind of an and, and, and internationally as well in a kind of an about what this counter-revolution meant. And I think here again we have to come back to the question in a kind of of, of a programmatic norm in a kind of and social content. Um, that is the planned in a kind of a, in a, did um, was a worker state in a kind of if you like the programmatic norm. In a kind of of um, you know uh, uh, of of um, Soviets elected and recallable delegates in a kind of and so on was it the de the, the democracy of Soviets which was the program of uh, 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 you know the, 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 you know that we're seeking in a kind of to bring about and it's part of the communist program to this day in a kind of and that uh, and if it wasn't that in a kind of and that then was it simply not you know, can nothing to do with the working class whatsoever, you know, kind of that. And therefore, that the, the existence of the plan, the existence of the, of, 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 of the monopoly of foreign trade, the existence of nationalization didn't matter. You know, already in those days, state capitalists started to argue, you know, kind of, and many anarchists and some social democrats started to argue, you know, kind of, no, this is just capitalism, you know, kind of, and that, because socialism must mean, you know, kind of workers' democracy, you know, and, that, and, uh, and so on. Of course, Trotsky and the left opposition replied, yes, certainly socialism represents workers' democracy. You know, kind of that. But there can be a degeneration of a workers' state that leaves you know, kind of the economic gains you know, kind of the workers' revolution you know, kind of intact. Not entirely intact, because you know, kind of to have a plan you know, kind of that's not democratic, that's not controlled by the working class, you know, kind of means you know, kind of that... Um, Many things, you know, kind of, you know, uh, you know that the, the interests of the working class are systematically neglected in the favour in, in favour of a privileged, you know, kind of bureaucracy, um, and that therefore, you know, kind of all sorts of other things go wrong as well. That you can't, you know, as we'll in the in the second session, you know, kind of, we're obviously going to deal much more with the question of the, the crisis of Stalinism and, 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 and planning. But in the 1930s, in a kind of an, um, under the pressure of the of, of the of, of the 
rebellion of the, of, of the rich peasants you know, kind of against the worker state and caused by the failures of the Stalinists you know, kind of and the bureaucracy to properly industrialize, they were suddenly forced to industrialize at an absolutely breakneck speed you know, kind of on a massive scale. You know, kind of that. Not only that, but to drive all the peasants, you know, to break the power of the peasants, you know, kind of that, they had to drive them all you know, kind of off their individual private, their 25 million in a kind of private farms in a kind of that the Russian Revolution had given them into collective farms in a kind of in that, you know, which resulted in a, again a massive fall in a kind of in, in agricultural production in, in, in the 1930s. Trotsky analysed in a kind of all this and came to the conclusion in a kind of that this you know kind of that, that, that two things in a kind of were true. You know that the um, that the socialization of industry in a kind of and the, and the control in a kind of of the uh, of, of um, you know kind of, 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 of the economy in a kind of by you know by rational planning you know by the potential in a kind of for, for, for rational planning you know kind of was an enormous gain and that you know hadn't been abolished and had to be defended at all costs. Nevertheless, in a kind of that, under the control of a bureaucracy, in a kind of that, it wasn't, in a kind of, it didn't realise, in a kind of its rationality. It in fact, in a kind of, uh, un under, uh, underwent all kinds of terrible, in a kind of bureaucratic irrationalities, in a kind of that, where the bureaucracy at the centre, in a kind of that, manipulated it, in a kind of that, in, in their own material selfish interests and not in the interests of the working class, and that therefore, you know, the, um, the um, uh, the economy, you know, the, 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 the economy, you know, kind of wasn't, you know, certainly wasn't socialism, you know, kind of as the Stalinists claimed. In fact, the terrible thing was, you know, kind of for the Stalinists to claim that it was socialism, you know, kind of, and that was, you know, um, itself, you know, kind of, and that one a terrible thing when people found out, you know, for the workers in the Soviet Union themselves to think, well, if this is socialism, you know, kind of, and that, you know. We're still, you know, kind of very, you know, very inadequate goods, hung, you know, bad quality goods, and you know, kind of there's not enough of them, and, and, and whatever. And also, in a kind of that, if if this is socialism, you know, kind of where is the democracy of the Soviets? Where is, you know, uh, in fact, you know, kind of, of course, you know, kind of far from there being a de democracy of the Soviets, you know, kind of that the regime, you know, turned, you know, certainly after 1934, 36, you know, kind of into a totalitarian dictatorship that kind of Lenin. That, um, that Trotsky, you know, kind of described as, as um, qualitatively, you know, kind of no different to, um, yeah, okay, give me another five minutes, mm -hmm. yeah, um, the, is that it's qualitatively the same, you know, kind of like that. Um, so, uh, as a qualitatively, sorry, in formal terms, it's very similar to a fascist dictatorship, you know, kind of an atomization of the working class, secret police, mass camps, you know, kind of, and so on. This horrible, you know, kind of, di you know, disgusting kind of, you know, development, you know, kind of, that, you know, what, especially once it was known about, you know, kind of, in, in, in you know, outside of the Soviet Union, you know, and that, um, had a very negative effect on the whole question of socialism itself, you know, on, on the goal of socialism itself. However, the industrialization, you know, kind of, and that, you know, did actually work. It did produce a massive increase in, 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 in the development of the Soviet Union as an industrial country. So much so that it was able, in a kind of, to fend off in a kind of another attack by the imperialists, this time by the Nazis, in a kind of in, in 1941, in a kind of and to play the main role in a kind of in actually defeating the Nazis in Europe. Um, this meant that the Soviet army, you know, kind of, you know, invaded and, and, and took over, you know, kind of huge areas of Central and, 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 and Eastern Europe. You know, kind of. It meant also, by the way, that, that in, in, in China, in the, a, a communist, a Stalinist communist, Mao Zedong and, and his armies, played the real role, you know, kind of in defeating the Japanese and their in, invasion. So that, in a sense, you know, kind of, that these, that what happened after the war was a massive expansion you know, kind of, of, the, uh, of, of the same sort of states. They survived. Now, this was a problem because Trotsky had predicted, you know, kind of, that the war would probably mean, you know, kind of the crisis and downfall of Stalinism in the, in the hope that, you know, the working class would then, you know, kind of be able to, you know, retake power, you know, kind of, in the Soviet Union. Just the last point is, is, is about, the, the, therefore, about the, the idea of the program of political revolution. The program of political revolution, in you know, kind of, is, you know, kind of, that... Um, is that a, a new social revolution in a kind of is not necessary in a kind of in the sense that it's not necessary to re-nationalise 
that if you think about the program that we're operating with in the capitalist world today, you know, kind of in that, you know, the Soviet Union all, had already done you know, kind of some of the most fundamental things you know, kind of that it was necessary to do, i.e. to seize control and nationalise you know, kind of the means of production, to plan, begin the process of planning you know, kind of, and to protect it against you know, kind of the outside world. You know, these gains were there and had to be defended, and that is, that is why Stalin... That's why, why Trotsky called for the defence of the Soviet Union, you know, kind of against the Nazis, against any other imperialist, you know, kind of attacks, because these things had to be defended. But, you know, kind of that, you know, ultimately they could only be defended by overthrowing the Stalinist bureaucracy. Only, only by actually sort of replacing this totalitarian dictatorship with workers' democracy, only by being able to return to our programme, you know, kind of our programmatic norms, our programmatic goals, actually, you know, kind of, could we do that? You know, kind of like that. Um, and Trotsky developed a whole programme of political revolution, which you know, kind of, I don't have the time to go into now, but which relate to the question of equality, of democratic rights, of free trade unions, you know, kind of, like that, of the recreation of Soviets and Soviet democracy, you know, kind of, like that, the, uh, of, of, of putting the bureau bureaucracy you know, kind of on rations, you know, kind of, uh, you know, he wasn't utopian in the sense that he didn't believe there could be no officials in the kind of in the transition period, but the question is they mustn't be rulers, they must be under the control, you know, kind of the working class, and the top layers of the bureaucracy, the aristocracy as he called them, you know, kind of needs to be dissolved. So he, did, he had this program, he did all this. Right, um, after the war, Therefore, in these states, in a kind of that, we believe it was necessary in a kind of to extend in a kind of this analysis to those states, and that a political revolution was necessary in them, in a kind of that they were qualitatively exactly the same in a kind of as the Soviet Union, and therefore, in a kind of uh, you know that that, that um, you know that, that this is this is important. We haven't I haven't got time now to go into the question of, uh, but we we should raise it in the discussion, and that is you know kind of the, the Trotskyists, you know. Working on, Trots on, on one aspect of Trotsky's prediction, you know, kind of that the Stalinists you know, were counter-revolutionary and couldn't make a revolution, you know, because, the, because of these bureaucratic overthrows you know, kind of that by the Soviet army, by Maoist guerrilla forces, you know, kind of by the Yugoslav guerrillas and so on, you know, kind of that, because this had occurred, that somehow or another, you know, kind of that, this, these Stalinists at least you know, kind of were not counter-revolutionaries, but were some form of roughly adequate revolution, if they were centrists or something or other in between revolution and reform, and that, and that therefore, you know, a political revolution in the full sense that Trotsky said, which meant an insurrection, in a kind of an, and the seizing of power, that this, in a kind of, was not necessary. Um, and that, that led to a fragmentation, in a kind of, a, that issue was central, in a kind of, to the process of fragmentation of the Fourth International. Um, and that is, um, you know, kind of dealt with in much greater detail than I've dealt with it in the degenerated revolution. And as I say, you know, in the next session, we're obviously going to deal with the economic problems and crisis, what actually led to the crisis of, of, of Stalinism, because, you know, why, why in fact, you know, we have to answer then the question, why wasn't there in the end a political you know, kind of revolution. There were attempts at it in Hungary in '56, in Poland, you know, kind of in, you know, kind of in, in '68, in, in and in, uh, in '80, and in, in, in a whole number, in East Germany in '53. But nevertheless, there wasn't a successful political revolution. And I think that's, you know, kind of the question, you know, that we have to debate, you know, kind of and discuss. Okay. Thank you so much for that, Dave. That was really interesting. Right. First of all.